Good evening, this is Quintus Curtius. Welcome back to the podcast. And in this podcast, I want to talk a little bit about my recent trip to Greece. I spent a week in Athens um, at the end of August, uh, first part of September. And those of you who follow the uh, the blog know that I've posted a lot of uh, photos of places I visited in Athens, historical sites. And I had a great time. Uh, nothing but good things to say about Greece and Greek people and, and the whole experience. And I got a few requests to record some impressions about it and some travel advice and little tidbits, things like that, that might help guys or anyone listening. So I wanted to do that, and I hope that this podcast will motivate others to um, do the same thing, maybe if not Athens, but other parts of Greece or other countries in general. But let me go ahead and dive in. I'm going to talk a little bit about some practical travel tips and then specific impressions of Athens that I had. Um, in terms of practical travel tips, these were the things that I found to be the most helpful to me, the most helpful travel tips. And they may not sound revolutionary or um, like anything you haven't already heard before, but it is nice to hear things confirmed by experience. Because let me tell you, doing just a few of the right things when you're on a long trip or you're you're doing a lot of walking, doing a lot of arduous type of moving around, uh, doing just a few of the right things can make a huge difference in your overall experience. So really try to pay attention to these things when you travel. These were the, these were the big impressions that I had of useful pointers, I would call them, that you should be mindful of when you, you travel. Uh, first, if you're going to be going some place where you're going to be doing a lot of walking, and let's face it, what place now does not involve a lot of walking? Pretty much everywhere, everywhere you go, any traveling you're going to do is going to involve a lot of walking, period. It's important to have good shoes. It's important to have good footwear. And when I say good, there's certain attributes that the shoes should have that I consider good. First of all, it sh they should be shoes that are very, very well cushioned. Okay? Um, you know, I, I, I can't tell you how, how for many years I had been using when I traveled just these... Um, you know, uh, these shoes that did not have a lot of padding or cushioning in them. And you'd, you'd get back to your, your room at night and you'd be tired. Your legs would be feeling it. And I chalked it up to, oh, maybe I just must be having a rough day or maybe I'm just getting old or whatever. But, man, I had a really, really good pair of shoes. Basically, where I brought a, a pair of running shoes that were suitable enough to be worn with both jeans and also could be worn with shorts and where you wouldn't look like a total dork you know wearing them so that that's what i think you, you, you try to find some sort of running shoes or any type of shoe that has a lot of cushioning and i mean cushioning where you feel like you can just you're you know you you, you enjoy walking in them because it makes a huge difference it really makes a huge difference and um i had for years, I had not really given that much thought, but man, it really, really makes a difference uh, because I, I spent hours every day walking and I felt like I could have gone 24 hours and you know not a problem. I mean, walking long distances never bothered me. Even when I was in the military, I was always good at on the humps and on uh, these long marches. I have long legs and it doesn't, you know, I can, I can go long distances. So the endurance is not a problem, but you need to have good shoes. And like I said, I think it's it. What I used was a a, um, a Nike running shoe that was black, that you know, it's all black, or maybe just a little bit of white around the edges. And you could basically use it in a pinch. I mean, I'm not saying it was a pinnacle of style or anything, but it it was presentable enough where you could wear it with shorts or jeans, and and it would still look not completely dorkish. <laughs> If, if that's a measure of anything. So that's the key thing because you, you, want, you want to be able to, you don't want to have to bring multiple pairs of shoes with you. You need to just have one and make them reliable. Now, if you're going for a longer trip, maybe that's different. But if you're just going for a week, 
uh, that's uh, that's a, a big thing. So the second thing that I, I found is I, I, I got a much better suitcase. You know, again, I had always had, uh, or in recent years anyway, I had always had suitcases that have, um, you know, you can roll them through the airport, but the wheels were just not really very well made or they were dorked up somehow or whatnot. But I got rid of my old suitcase, got a better one. And this one was, uh, again, you want to have something that you can take on the plane. You don't, You never want to have to check bags. When you're traveling, my I never travel. I never check bags ever, because you should be traveling with leaned down, stripped down style, where you just do not have a lot of things. You do not have a lot of stuff. You never want to check bags. It just slows you down. But uh, you want to have a suitcase that you can just kind of blast through these airports with, and it does not involve a lot of. Um, exertion on your part, something that also is tough enough where you can roll it on uh, city sidewalks and not have a problem. It should also have other features, accessible pockets on the outside, maybe a a place to lock the zippers on it so that uh, people can't get inside it too easily. Uh, these are the things that you need to look at, look for in a, in, a, in a suitcase. And it should be a dark color because it's going to get dirty as hell. It's going to get scuffed up. It's going to get dirty. And you don't want it to be something that shows a bunch of scuffs on it. Like, again, I, I just get, get a black one. That's what I would do. It doesn't show any grime or dirt or anything. All right. The other, the other thing that I found... And I, 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 I was in Italy in May, and I found, you know, for years I had used Airbnb, you know, and I, I, still, I still use Airbnb when I go to Brazil because I like the privacy, I like the accessibility, I don't like to have to deal with the hotel nonsense down there. But, you know, when you're in Europe, you know, the hotels, sometimes it's nice to have everything kind of made up for you there. You know, I like, I, I'm starting to really like strategically placed little hotels because you get a lot of benefits number one you don't have to you don't have to meet up with somebody when you're coming off a long flight you don't want to have to get into the airport and then have to call some dunce and try to meet them at their place and deal with the keys and this and that and if you don't know the language at a place maybe this is maybe that's the reason why I, I don't have a problem using Airbnb in, in Brazil because I know the language. I can speak to the people and I can I can get my business done. But you know, I don't know Greek. I don't know Italian, and and um, you feel like you're at a handicap in some ways. Now maybe that's just my imagination, but I, I it, it's something that you think about. But again, hotels are nice because they're open 24 hours. You get off the plane, you go right to them. You can lie down on your bed. You can decompress. You can go take a shower. You just feel really ready to take on the world, and you don't really need to have a lot of this uh, adjustment period when you're in somebody else's apartment or house. So hotels were were nice. Now, I, I think an appropriate hotel should have certain features. Okay, Again, if you're going to a major city, I like a hotel. I always pick hotels that are close to metro stations. Or reasonably close. It doesn't have to be right next door to it, but it should be within, you know, walking distance, so that when you get out, when you get out of your, get off your flight, you take the train or whatever, or bus to the hotel, and you don't have to do a lot of changes. You don't have to do a lot of switching up. You don't have to do a lot of other this other nonsense. You can just kind of go right from from door to door, and everything's taken care of. Now, Athens has a very, very good metro system. It has a fantastic metro system. And I really liked the fact that you step out of the airport in Athens and you get right on the metro and you go right, you can go right downtown. And I had a small hotel that was right near uh, an area called the metro station of uh, Metaxorgio. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Metaxorgio. It's right near Omonia. And um, it was very nice, you know, been recently refurbished, breakfast is included, you know, you get out of bed, uh, you know, they run breakfast from, say, 7 in the morning to 10 in the morning, you know, you eat early, get out, get your, get on the road, or get out, get out the door and start seeing the sights before uh, the crowds get there, so 
uh, hotels. Think of think of hotels. Give hotels a second thought. You know, hotels went kind of went through a little bit of a rough patch there. They got a bad rep with the advent of Airbnb, but there is value. There is some value to having them. All right. Now let me give those that covers the basic travel tips. Well, maybe one last thing. You should always have money with you. Um, you should hit the ground running with money. A lot of a lot of people uh, don't like to, or they, they like to wait till they arrive at their destination to buy the local currency. But I'm a big believer. You should have with you, say euros, um, in your pocket when you hit the ground running. Don't rely on those airport exchange places because the uh, the exchange rates are very very unfavorable. What I do is you go to your local bank, and in every city you should have. There's probably a, a bank that allow you to buy foreign currency, get a few hundred uh, dollars in say euros or whatever currency your yen or whatever, yuan, real, whatever it is, and have that with you, so you don't have that uh, disconcerting feeling of of feeling out of place when you when you um, when you hit the you hit the deck. All right, now specific things that I liked about Athens. You know, I, I really, really enjoyed being in Athens because um, I just like the people. You know, you just somehow you just feel very, uh, the certain parts of the world, certain places you just feel at home. I just like the way the Greeks are. I like the way they do things. I like the intimate nature of how they talk to people. I like the fact there's none of this weirdness and uh, distances that people put between themselves like in other places. You know, you, people speak normally like normal human beings uh, and everybody's very proud of their country everybody's very proud of their heritage the way people should be and I respect that the fact that they respect themselves makes me respect them um, certain things that I really liked about Greece I love this I love this uh, coffee they have there this they called it frappe and as far as I know it's the only country where they have this it's like a whipped coffee it's like a cold coffee drink where they um and I, I i got really into this when i was i worked with the greek army when i was in bosnia you know almost 20 years ago and i really liked it ever since and back in those days they had these little electric whisks that they carried around with them they could make it in the squad bays and whatnot but you you put uh instant coffee sugar and um uh you know and and uh you know water and sometimes milk, sugar, things like that, and they just they froth it up. And it just has a very, very nice, uh, refreshing quality in the morning, especially for some reason it really hits the spot. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of caffeine to it, which I like. And, um, yeah, if you've never tried it, you should, <laughs> you should try it. My understanding, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they told me that Starbucks, I guess, is trying to do a version of this now. They call it Nitro, I guess they... It's an expensive version. They, I guess, they blast, um, I don't know, some gas in the coffee, and it foams it up. I don't know if it's the same thing as frappe, but maybe this is taking off in some way. But other things that I really liked besides the people and the and the coffee, the, the food was very very good. You know, I had I had um, you know, all the types of seafoods that I like: fresh fish, sardines. Uh, whole fish, uh, calamari, uh, the well, squid, all those things, uh, and you can find a lot of places to eat everywhere. Prices are var- like like any big city. Prices vary a lot, but the prices are very very favorable, very favorable. You can have a good meal for under ten euros, a very very satisfying meal for under ten euros if you know where to look and where to go. Um, you know, fifteen would be better. A budget about 15 euros uh, to have a really really nice meal but you know when I'm traveling I don't really eat three big meals a, a day I'm pretty much two meals a day is kind of what I I do I'll have a uh, get uh, a light breakfast in the morning and for some reason I'm pretty much good to go until early afternoon then I'll have a big meal in the afternoon and that's that's pretty much it I don't know why it is for some reason when I travel I don't really feel as hungry as I do when I'm at home I don't know maybe it's just the body or adjusting or whatnot but it's always been that way uh, prices are also very good. Uh, prices of everything. I picked up some mementos for people here. You know, carved olive wood um, mementos. Uh, very, very good prices. But uh, again, just what really made it 
very nice trip. Is is the people? I have nothing but good things to say about the Greeks. Uh, they they really really very very nice, very very good people, and they remind me of um, kind of the it's, <laughs> it's it's sort of a cross between Europe and the Middle East. Maybe the best of both worlds. It's sort of a crossroads of those two worlds, east and west. It's been, in many ways, it's always been that way ever since ancient times. So we have to be um, have to be appreciative of that. And of course, you know, you've got the incredible historical sites, which are not maybe not for everybody, but for me, are very very inspiring. And I found them. Uh, I found it uh, very moving. It was a big moment for me, believe me, as you can imagine, uh, just being in these places that I had read about for so long, for so long. You know, I'm I'm 49 years old. This is the first time I've ever been to Greece. I should have gone years ago, but you know how life is. You get sidetracked and you other countries become higher up on your priority list and you lose track of, uh, of, uh, of different things. So um, so those, those are some of my impressions. You know, I, I thought maybe listeners might want to hear a suggested itinerary that I kind of followed that I, I think worked really well. Um, and again, you know, people are always going to tell you that, oh, you shouldn't stay in Athens. You should go out and see the islands. And, and I'm, that's, I'll be doing that on, on a next trip. That, that's a future trip. I do want to see Crete and some of the islands. Uh, but you can't do too much. You know, you really you really should try to keep things balanced. Otherwise, you'll just spend your whole time running around and and uh, get burnt out. But here's a suggested itinerary. On day one, you know, head down to the Acropolis uh, in downtown Athens. And when you go there, you can buy, and it's going to be, it's always going to be crowded, but you can buy, there's two different types of options. You can pick which option you want. If you buy a a ticket just to see the Acropolis, it's it's like 20 euro. But if you spend the extra 10 euros, you get a 30, 30 euro ticket pass. You can see some other things. It includes also the Roman Agora, uh, Aristotle's Lyceum, uh, Hadrian's Library, and um, a couple other places I can't remember. But think about getting the deluxe ticket because it'll save you money. But head down to the Acropolis and uh, you know get down there early to beat the heats and the crowd. And once you've seen that, you know stroll through the streets of uh, Plaka and the food district uh, Manasteraki, which has a lot of nice uh, places to eat. Um, yeah, and just you know spend your day just chilling out uh, down there. You can spend a lot of time at the Monasteraki flea market, which is very nice, looking at souvenirs. or uh, And don't forget to see the Acropolis Museum. Um, there's also a theater of uh, Dionysios you can see there as well. And so that'll keep you busy. You know, that, that first day, just all these sites, you stay moving. Um, and I, I really like this Monasteraki area there, all the, all the places to... It, and they're all tourist places, but sometimes it's it's nice to see that too you know I, I found a great restaurant with good lamb kebabs which I like and uh, was, was very very happy and um, you know maybe on your second day you can head down to the parliament the, the building that hand, uh, I don't know the address of it but the Greek parliament building they do a changing of the guard ceremony outside parliament uh, Plataea Plataeus uh, uh, at Syntag uh, Syntagmatos I think Anyway, it's the people will know where it is. It's the changing of the guard. They have these these uh, goose stepping guards that go by, and uh, I, I enjoyed watching. You can get very very close to these guys. That's kind of what I liked about Greece. Is it's still it's still based on human relations. You have to interact with people. You know, you can't just hide behind this impersonal bureaucracy like you can in a lot of other places. Uh, you can maybe then check out the Benaki Museum. Uh, stroll down to the national or through the national gardens which is right near the uh, parliament building you can maybe check out the temple of the uh, olympian zeus the olympeon which is down um you know close to the acropolis and i I posted some photos of these places on my site 
And of course, don't forget the National Archaeological Museum, which is a must-see. You know, that has all the, the major treasures of Greek art and culture from going back from prehistoric times, you know, 2000 BC up to the present or even earlier. A very, very impressive collection there. And I've put photos of that as well on my site. Um, you know, maybe on your third day, you can check out the Central Market at Athens. Um, you know, check out maybe the Museum of um, Cyc Cycladic Art or Byzantine Museum. There's also a, an uh, uh, a Museum of Islamic Art that I tried to visit, but I did not get there on the right day and I couldn't see it. But if you do get to, they say it has a great collection, you know, about 8,000 pieces, so it might be worth checking out. And, um, you know, that's, that's, those are some of the major sites, you know, the, the nightlife stuff, you know, you can figure that out on your own. You don't really need me to tell you that I've, I've gotten to the point where I don't really, I don't really care about that stuff anymore. You know, I mean, I, I, I like to go out, but you know, um, that's not really what I do. I'm not here to, to I'm not here to, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not here to talk about that, that sort of thing. That's, uh, I'm more about uh, other other things. I don't talk about that stuff. I talk like to talk about other stuff. But you get the idea. You know, you should go out. You should go see. Go to some clubs. Maybe go to some nice bars. It's just, sometimes it's just nice to be in a nice place. You know, just watch people, have fun, chill out. You'd be surprised what good things can happen to you if you just go somewhere, sit down, chill out, get a drink, look around. And just sort of let things happen. You know, that's kind of a good a good way to approach it. So so anyway, those were some of my thoughts, my impressions of the recent trip to Greece. A great trip, and I hope to be back soon, very soon. And um oh about the language. I didn't I almost forgot. I do not know Greek. Okay, I do not know Greek. Uh, however, you will find that the Greeks are very obviously understanding about this. They understand that most people don't study their language. Uh, and as long as you know a few basic phrases and a few basic things, which is all I learned, uh, those things will go a, a long way. You know, I know the basic, you know, good morning, good evening, kalimera, kalispera, andio, goodbye, you know, um, paracalo, please, um, Efaristo, thank you. Uh, Sainomi, sorry. You know, basically, just the basic things. And um, maybe I think something that also really helped me is the fact that even though I don't know Greek, I do know the Greek alphabet. I, 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 I can't read Greek, but I can transliterate it. What I mean by that is if I see a Greek word, I can I can phonetically sound it out. And so I know what it I know what it, even though I don't know what it means, I can phonetically sound it out and I can detect if it has any cognates. Cognates are, are words that have, uh, there's a linguistic term called a cognate. And a cognate is, is a word that has, uh, like words that have common origins. So um, uh, how that helps is, is, is especially in, in uh, getting around a city, I had a map. And I never use GPS, any of that bullshit. I, I always take maps. I'm just old school like that. And um, when I'm, you're reading street signs or menus, you can just read. Um, you can uh, you can just read you can read things and get the idea of what it means. Like for example, when I wanted, I was in one place and I wanted to get a coffee, and I saw the menu, and I saw on there one of the menu options for coffee was Hellenicos Diplos. Hellenicos Diplos. So I could just tell, I don't know, Greek double, literally. Okay, so my, I assumed, okay, it was a double coffee, a double Greek. And I know the, the what, what the Greeks call Greek coffee is what the Arabs call Arabic coffee and what the Turks call Turkish coffee. It's the very strong ground uh, ground coffee with uh, mixed, sometimes with cardamom in it. And Diplos, you figure double, you know, uh, in Latin, duplex. So... If you already know other a few other languages, if you see a language that's in the same Indo-European family, and if you can read the alphabet, you can kind of figure out, you can kind of 
interpolate. And that's kind of how I how I do things. Even though I don't know the language, I can pretty much figure out the gist of it just by looking at it. And you have to learn to do these things. You have to learn to do these things because once you know one or two languages, you will be able to deduce meanings in other related languages. Like, for example, if you know, if you have a background in Arabic, if you've studied Arabic, even though I say I don't I don't know Persian or uh, Urdu or these other, you can you can read the letters and you can kind of get the idea of what is being what the word means. Not always, not always, but sometimes. And but I, when I say sometimes, so often a very high percentage. Anyway, these little linguistic tricks, little techniques, are things you have to master. You have to learn. So you should know the Greek alphabet anyway. Anyone and most people in the old days, most people, even mathematicians, knew the Greek alphabet because so many uh, mathematical quantities were written with Greek letters. So it should not be too difficult for you to learn the Greek alphabet should not be difficult. And if you can do that, and if you know one or two other Indo-European languages, you may be okay in navigating around. Although it would be better still to learn Greek. But again, one has to be realistic. One can't do everything. I, I, I understand that. But um, anyway, I just wanted to make that language comment. So though that will wrap up this podcast here. And if you have any questions or other comments, you can feel, feel, feel free to put them as a comment to this post. I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.